Agi agi, may putay sa dahi. In English, gay, gay, you have a vagina on your forehead. This expression has been passed down across generations, crystallizing the dominance of patriarchy in our society. And if we unpack this phrase, we can see how kaagian, or the nature of being gay in the West Visayan context, is deeply interconnected with femininity. Thus, the agi's oppression can be explained by patriarchy's fear or othering towards this very femininity. In the face of patriarchy, anything that is feminine is shamed or othered. Misogyny is normalized and toxic machismo is celebrated. We see young boys being reprimanded for liking Barbies, swaying their hips when walking, or even just liking the color pink. We see fathers punish their sons, or older brothers punish their younger brothers for displaying any form of femininity. This oppression is not just exclusive to the agi, but is also experienced by the bakla, the bayot, and our trans sisters. They are being denied of comfort rooms, safe spaces, and even just living their full lives. We see the normalization of such othering turn into the normalization of hate. This archaic narrative creates a picture of misogyny and homophobia. So growing up loud, flamboyant, and extremely femme, I was called by this name numerous times, hundreds, thousands, millions of times. Agi. And the more I heard the word, the more powerful my metaphorical vagina grew. Agi, agi, may putay sa dahi, the more powerful I have become. Hi, my name is Ray Hontanar. I'm a professor of literary studies here in UP Visayas. Um, and I am a proud agi. It is a privileged statement to say that I was born in a very loving and um, very accepting family. While the outside world was full of hate and prejudice, my parents showered me with so much love that the sexism and homophobia from bullies failed to scar my soul. But then, growing up with such privilege galvanized me to use my voice and not settle for personal emancipation alone. As an academic, I use my voice to mold a new generation of artists, scholars, activists, educators, and cultural workers. As a queer rights advocate, I use my voice to enlighten young queer kids of their rights and the importance of having a community. I use my voice to comfort and empower them that they are not alone in this world. And in their journey towards celebrating their queerness, they have mentors, allies, and mothers who will always be there to support them. So born and raised here in magical Panay, I grew up witnessing how the Agi exemplifies bravery and defiance amidst the forces of the patriarchy. I am surrounded by a plethora of Agi friends, from artists to beauty queens to politicians to beauticians, and each face is a face of bravery. The more they are judged, the louder they exist. The more they are subjugated, the fiercer they subvert. So commonly described as an effeminate man, the Agi is an indigenous homosexual identity exclusive to the milieu of Panay. And particular to this milieu, it, he has a different cultural distinction from the dominant image of queerness in our country, which is the bakla. For the Agi, strong feminine identity can be traced back to our str strong pre-colonial history, or as I love to call it, herstory. Growing up as a queer kid in the 90s, I did not have an easy time looking for queer icons, looking for queer figures. Queer kids nowadays are lucky to have the great Mama RuPaul, to have queer artists, queer activists as their icons. During my time, I had Disney princesses, Disney villains, and strong female pop stars who quenched my yearning for a powerful, feminine, or queer symbol. 
But the songs of Madonna were not enough to quench or to describe this kind of power that exudes from the land where I was born, the Gahum from Panay. So eventually, entering academia and focusing on gender studies introduced me to the powerful imagery that I have been looking for, the Babaylan. So the Babaylan, in this journey, I reached faraway places only to come to the realization that the only way to find power is to go back to the womb of the land where I was born, and that is Panay. My body of research on West Visayan queer writing, as I coin it, agi literature, shows that majority of West Visayan queer writers and agi writers champion the image of the Babaylan to decolonize queer narratives and empower the agi persona. The Babaylan, as history tells us, is a female or effeminate male shaman. Accounts from Spanish chroniclers like Morga and Alzina taught us that some female Babaylanes did not just wear women's clothing. They occupied female roles in societies where they belong, for some even had husbands. So the Babaylan is also a medium, a keeper of tradition, and a political icon in pre-colonial times. However, 1521, you know what happened. The arrival of colonialism in 1521 demonized the Babaylan as a symbol of pagan ways. For Catholic colonizers, the gender-crossing omnipotent Babaylan was threatening and must be eradicated. In a chapter dedicated to the Babaylan, gay study scholar J. Neil Garcia presents this translated account from Pedro Chirino's Relacion de las Islas de Filipinas, where a Spanish friar is seen cutting the hair of the Babaylan in public. So we see how this public shaming of the Babaylan shifts the power in Philippine society during that time. It becomes a way of changing the landscape of power in our country. As a new religious hegemony emerges, the ways of Abailan are pushed into the dark, othered and demonized by the Spaniards and their legions of newly converted Indios. So colonization has changed the dynamics of power. Colonization has created these rigid binaries of gender, thus the slur, agi agi. So it took centuries for many progressive movements like feminist movement and the queer movement to unfurl in the Philippines. It was only in 1994 when the first gay pride happened in our country. That same year, the historical Ladlad Anthology, edited by J. Neil Garcia and Danton Remoto, was published. I was three years old during that time, singing to Spice Girls, singing to Atteredge, with zero idea that one day I'll be part of that brave movement. So inspired by the blossoming of Ledlad in Metro Manila, Agi writers in Western Visayas started writing about their loves and longings, thus the birth of Agi literature. In their efforts to decolonize queer narratives in the region, writers like Alex de los Santos, the late Felino Garcia Jr., Jesus Encelada, Leonard Alcoran, and the great John Eremil Teodoro used the Babaylan as an embodiment of feminine power free from patriarchal control. So they use animism and eroticism to celebrate the beauty, the power, the magic of the Babaylan. So through the image of the Babaylan, they redefined queerness by empowering Kaagian. So studying Kaagian vis-a-vis Babaylanism has led me to an understanding that we can veer away from Western forms of theorizing, that we can veer away from Western identities of power and embrace our own indigenous narratives. We must realize that there is power in indigenous knowledge, indigenous identities, and indigenous ways of living. So we cannot deny that 
despite centuries of colonization, Babylonic practices are deeply embedded in West Visayan culture. My tita, who is an accomplished heart surgeon, goes to the Sorhano when science fails to answer her questions. As Panayanans, we believe in the concept of Dungan, or spiritual twin, or energy. We believe in the concept of Daga, or blood offering, or even the concept of the Mariit, a place that is haunted or inhabited by unseen beings. Exhibit A. Pause for drama. This theater is Mariit. So while we cannot ignore the reality that colonization continues to, or science continues to subjugate indigenous traditions, we cannot ignore that our animist past, our Babylonic past, continues to shape our modern present. And the concept of Babylonism continues to shape not just the creative imagination, but also the collective imagination of the Panayanans. After finishing my master's thesis on Babylonism and Agit poetry, I found myself asking these questions. So how does Babylonism serve as a theory of power, of emancipation for the Agit, of decolonization? I may not be a Babylon in a literal sense. I cannot heal the sick. I cannot call for rain. I cannot make fire. That would be amazing. Sana all. Like, an avenger or a mutant. But as an academic who studies and promotes culture, and as a queer rights advocate who fights, who stands for my community, I am proud to say that I carry the legacy, the magic, and the bravery of my Babaylan foremothers. The Babaylan symbol is an ideal symbol for queer liberation because it challenges patriarchal core values and uses a power that veers away from the dynamics of domination. So living in a time of disinformation, strongman politics, and oppressive dictatorships, the awakening of interest in Babylonic studies or Babylon studies is a battle cry for future Agit writers, academics, and artists to always take up space. So use that space. Use that voice, use that power as a student, as an activist, as a queer rights advocate, as a professor, as a social media influencer, as a social justice warrior. We are all modern day Babaylanes. And as we continue standing on the shoulders of our Babaylan foremothers, we vow to continue unlearning the chains of colonialism. We vow to continue fighting the patriarchy and end all forms of oppression. Agi, agi, may putay sa dahi. It is high time to reclaim the power from that slur. Yes, I am an agi, but I am an agi with a voice. And an agi with a voice is an, an agi with power. And I will use this voice, I will use this power to exist boldly and unapologetically, and write bravely against the tradition of silence. Madam, salamat. <laughs>